We have a lot to cover in today's video, including the latest trade talk around the league. We're looking at the Ottawa Senators, Buffalo Sabres, as well as a crazy rumor around Mark andre Fleury. We also have some updates regarding the 2018 World Junior Championship investigation on Team Canada. We also have a big update on Houston prepping for an NHL team. Uh, we also have several other roster cuts, injury updates, news from the waiver wires, and a signing in Pittsburgh. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover today, so we're going to get right into it and get started. In case you missed it earlier, Grigory Denisenko was picked up by Vegas from the Florida Panthers, and we have some more interesting names. I think there was 22 players in total on waivers today, and Madden, Chris Dreger, and a few others that are certainly interesting here to say the least. If you want a little bit more of a detailed analysis on all of that, part of today's news, uh, check out the YouTube cards. I do have another video the Pittsburgh Penguins have signed uh, forward Colin White, who was in camp on a PTO. So he converts the PTO to a contract. It's a lucrative two-way deal is what it is. It's a one-year, two-way contract. League minimum at the NHL level, 775. But the AHL salary is 500 k That's almost unprecedented, almost unheard of. Um, I'm not sure, based on looking at things, that the Penguins can and will put him on the NHL roster to open the season. I would not be shocked if he goes on NHL waivers tomorrow uh, to be demoted to the AHL. We'll see, unless they have some other moves that they can keep him on there and delay that. But obviously, giving him a two-way deal, they had to uh, make the AHL part lucrative, suspecting that he's probably going to have to spend a fair bit of time there. So uh, we'll see. I don't think they've made their final roster choices yet, but... White could end up getting picked up on waivers. I don't think that he would, but you never know. I think he's going to need waivers, though, and will likely play in the American Hockey League. But either way, he's signed, which is the main thing. And another player who converted their PTO to a contract today as well. Uh, but again, going to spend mostly in the minor. And that's New Jersey Devils forward Max Wilman, former flyer. Uh, he gets a... Uh, a pretty lucrative AHL deal. It's a 135k uh, with 150,000 guaranteed and 775 to NHL level. So the way this works is when he works NHL games, if he gets games, he'll get 775 or prorated for the, for those games. 135 in the American Hockey League, but he's guaranteed a total of 150. So even if he doesn't get called up, he's going to make extra. Um, so I suspect they probably figure that that he'll likely be a call up option for at least a few games throughout the season. So Wilman's on waivers, though, because he does need waivers to go to the minor. So I don't think he'll uh, be picked up. But again, sometimes crazier things have happened, and you just never know. Uh, another big move that happened today is uh, getting a lot of attention is the Seattle Kraken did confirm that top prospect Shane Wright, the former fourth overall pick from a couple seasons back now, has been demoted to play at their American Hockey League affiliate. Of course, we talked about earlier in the summer that uh, the Kraken were working on getting an exception from the CHL because technically Shane Wright could go back and play junior one last time um, but he was only one game short of meeting the games played requirement to get an exception to play in the AHL instead of the CHL so they were able to get an exception on that um, because he was one game shy and of course we lost an entire season, season in the OHL because of COVID. The only reason he's anywhere close to that exception amount was because he was granted exceptional status to start a year earlier so he get to play at age 15 instead of 16 so um yeah so shane wright's been demoted i know there's some people concerned considering how high he was drafted i encourage you not to be shane wright lost an entire year of development and that was absolutely critical for some guys some guys went over to europe and were able to play in lower level pro leagues and that was really good for them shane wright opted not to do that um, I'm not sure what rationale or what all went into his decision, but it did set him back. No matter what you want to say about it, to me, it had a big, big impact. Uh, so he will be starting in the AHL. Uh, it's up to him to play big minutes, have a big role, um, you know, really lead that team. And we'll see what happens if the Kraken need him later into the season. Hopefully he gets some games. But at this point, Shane Wright will be starting at the AHL level to start this season. A few injury updates as well. 
Um, the Florida Panthers have confirmed that Sam Bennett likely is going to be out for a few weeks. He's definitely not going to be ready for opening night. He's a lower body injury. Uh, they're listing him as uh, as week to week right now. I believe or day to day, but he, they suspect that he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. So we'll see. But he won't be there for opening night. And the Golden Knights are going to be without Zach Whitecloud on the blue line for a while. He had a hand injury that required surgery. Uh, they're listing him as week to week, but Vegas reporters are saying that it's likely going to be about three months. So he's probably looking at, because of the recovery time and everything, that he's probably looking at not being available till like close to Christmas or into, into January. So that's a big blow for Vegas. Uh, White Cloud and Nick Hag played a big role in that third pair, leading them to the Stanley Cup. But the good news is that when he should be back and ready to go for the second half of the season. I don't know that it's a big enough blow to cause too much concern to Vegas, but certainly a player they'd rather have in their lineup for sure. Some other key names that have been demoted that don't require waivers to the um, minor leagues as well. The Los Angeles Kings have sent down Alex Turcott, Alex Laferriere, and Brant Clark. I'm a little surprised on Clark. I really thought he was going to make the opening night roster. but um, And sometimes, too, depending on salary cap and stuff, sometimes you see teams demote players, and then after the deadline for being roster and cap compliant, sometimes they can make some recalls and change some things around later. So we'll have to wait and see. Of course, uh, tomorrow is going to be an interesting day as well for waivers because it's going to be the last day that players can be placed on waivers that need to go to the minors for their teams to be cap compliant because the cap uh, situation teams have to have their final rosters for opening night and everything's submitted by Monday. I think it's 5 p.m. Eastern time. So your uh, tomorrow's the last day a player can go on a waiver so they have time to clear to be demoted. So tomorrow I expect the waiver wire to be extremely busy. Could kind of probably be some interesting names. And at the same time, wouldn't be shocking between tomorrow and early Monday if there's even, uh, you know, I'm not saying there's going to be trades, but there could be. Uh, the odds are higher. Uh, I wouldn't think it'd be anything huge, but uh, there could be a few small movements that way too. So we'll have to see. It could be a busy time. Uh, an update as well on the Canadian 2018 World Junior Championship team that's been under investigation, which feels like forever. Don't have a huge update, but I know listening to some of the NHL reporters talk about it uh, in the last few days, it sounds like at this point, because we all thought we were going to get an update before the end of the summer, we thought there'd be an update before training camps open, then we're like, okay, well, we're going to have an update before training camps are over, before the NHL regular season starts, right? And at this point, listening to Gary Bettman and Bill Daly, who were asked about this at their most recent Board of Governors meetings just in the last few days, there really is no update, and there's no timetable from them. So what the NHL insiders are saying was that from what they've heard through other sources is that it sounds like the London, Ontario Police Department don't want to pursue anything any further. Uh, they've conducted their investigation, and it doesn't sound, now this could turn out to be wrong, so don't take this as you know 100% accurate. This is just what they're hearing that it sounds like they don't want to push anything any further. So that would lead us to think that no charges could be laid. Now, the NHL, we know, has done their own investigation. And obviously, at this point, we don't know what they think of the outcome and the results of everything like that. But I would suspect that regardless of what their thoughts are and what kind of evidence they may or may not have to show any wrongdoings, I don't know what they have. We don't really know what went on. We're waiting for clarification on this is that uh, I would think that from a, just from a legal perspective, uh, union perspective, that they'd have a hard time imposing any type of punishment on players without there being charges from the cops. You would think, right? I don't know. We'll see. But I know at one point we had heard five players were expected to be suspended. And there were a lot of people went on a witch hunt trying to figure out who those five players were. I don't. I mean, lots of people have their thoughts, their uh, their opinions. I don't know. Anyways, it just seems really bizarre. It just sounds like it's possible that nothing may come from it, but it's all largely going to probably depend on the local police that were investigating it. Because if they don't push charges, that kind of kind of doesn't make much for a case. So I don't know. It really makes you think. Because with the whole Alex Formanton thing with the sentence. A lot of people have labeled him as being guilty because he never got re-signed. But 
I don't know what other reason there would be to not sign him. He was a really good like third line player for them. So you know, I can understand why people kind of painted that picture, but it just it makes things that much more complicated and weird. Um, but yeah, we'll see if there's more updates. But at this point, it's possible that we may not get much more. And if there is an update, that the update might actually turn out to be that there's not enough evidence to to press charges and. That that's it. I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I don't want to say that that's for sure going to be the case, but what some NHL uh, reporters are saying that sounds like it's quite possible. So uh, we'll have to wait for further updates if there are any to see if that indeed ends up turning out to be the case or not. Now another big update as well. We talked about this yesterday, uh, but there's some more information that I can kind of conclude here. Yesterday in the video, I talked about the fact that there was a, an announcement that the Toyota Center, which is the arena uh, in Houston, Texas, where the uh, the Houston Rockets play, and we know that there's been a heavy interest in Houston to bring an NHL team there, and that would be likely where they would want to go, right? I know Tillman Fertitta is the owner of the NBA team, and there's been some talk that he would want to own an NHL team. I've heard rumors that it would be another owner. I, regardless of all that, the uh, arena was announced that it would be undergoing, uh, I think it was a big amount. It was like 30 to $50 million. It was a huge amount of money being put into the arena for arena upgrades and renovations. I think it was over a little over $30 million. And I just purely speculated on my own thought process when i seen that i was like hmm the updates i read didn't say anything about what they were going to be doing like i didn't really have any firm details i just speculated with all the talk recently about nhl expansion and or relocation because we don't know the long-term solution yet for the coyotes uh, although that seems more likely for salt lake but hard to say but I wondered if, if these upgrades might have anything to do with prepping for a hockey team in the long term. And it turns out I'm, I was right. Uh, Chris Johnston, of course, NHL insider, uh, put out some information on his um, Twitter page earlier confirming that some of the upgrades are going to include ice-making equipment so they can be NHL ready. So Houston is definitely taking a step in that direction to become prepared for hockey. So we don't know what their thought process is. Maybe they're op open to either expansion or relocation. But I can say between Houston making this big jump, uh, now these also these upgrades are all going to be staggered over a period of time, so I'm not sure exactly when the ice part would be in place. Um, however, so having said that, uh, we know that the owner of the, uh, the Utah Jazz in Salt Lake City, they're also pretty eager as well for NHL hockey. So I do think... That by February, if the Coyotes don't have anything figured out for a long-term viable arena, that the NHL is going to have some real serious options to keep them in the West and to move them to one of those places. Now, whoever doesn't, if the Coyotes do move in one of those team cities that gets that team, the other team is still going to be heavily in the mix for expansion. And based on what we've heard from NHL insiders, from what they're hearing around the NHL Board of Governors and all that recently, it sounds like there's going to be heavy interest to expand by upwards of possibly by four teams. I mean, it's not going to be all at once. I think it would be staggered probably over, you know, five, six, seven years. It's probably going to be a while before they get serious about it. And I would think that any team that is awarded would probably be a couple of years out usually. Um, I don't know how quickly we would go, but I just think from an expansion perspective, like it would have to be staggered. But I can see there being, you know, um, uh, you know, upwards of 34 teams in the next like seven to 10 years. Another big point to this, uh, make, uh, the, if you look at the other professional leagues, it makes more sense for the NHL to push forward for that more than the other teams uh, or other leagues. And the other leagues, I, th I can see expanding at least a little bit too. But uh, you got to remember, the, the NHL has a bunch of teams in Canada. The other leagues don't. The, only, the other leagues, like the NFL doesn't have any. The NBA and Major League Baseball only have one. So, obviously, there's only like 25 U.S. markets covered. So, there's a lot more room for expansion within the United States for hockey than there are the others, other sports. So, it makes total sense for them to be looking at this, especially if they're going to be bringing in upwards of a billion dollars per franchise. Like, can you imagine if the NHL makes that? Like, that's a lot of money. That's hard to turn down. So, I really do think... 
expansion is a real possibility. And Houston is definitely taking steps to be prepared for that opportunity in the near future. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, some trade talk around the league. I want to take a look at the Ottawa Senators. Of course, word is uh, confirmed today. Josh Norris is missing the final preseason game. That's ongoing right now with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he's not going to be ready for the season opener. Uh, many suspect right now that the Sens are pushing hard to get Shane Pinto signed because without Norris and Pinto, that leaves them pretty vulnerable down the middle. It only gives them Timmy Stutzla with any experience in the top three lines. They got Ridley Gregg, who's a budding former first-round pick, who's you know expected to take some big steps this year, but putting a lot on him would be almost too much. So they need Pinto more than ever. So you're either going to see a trade for the Sens. They need to get this looked after ASAP, in my opinion, um, over like the next you know 24 hours. Or if they if you don't, that's going to mean that Norris is likely going to start the season on LTIR. The problem is though, is we don't know at this point, and there's, nobody can give us a clear timetable. Listen to the comments from DJ Smith, especially. We don't know how long Norris is going to be out. Do they even need long-term injury reserve? Because if he only needs like an extra week, you don't want him to miss more time than he needs to. And once he goes on LTIR, uh, because it's season opening LTIR, you have to miss 10 games in 24 days. So he's going to be out until I think it was like November 8th or whatever against, I think it's against the Habs uh, or no, it wasn't the Habs. It was, I think it's anyway, I can't remember who they play, but it's early, like November 8th or something like that would be the earliest he could come back. And you're not going to want that as a franchise if you can help it. Right. So to me, you need to make a a trade and get Pinto in the lineup. The problem is, is if you're not going to have Norris uh, for a undetermined period of time, and then you do make a trade as well to get Pinto in the lineup, you're still kind of shorthanded. If you bring Pinto in, you don't trade anybody. You go the LTIR route. At least you can have closer to a full lineup. You're not going to be you're going to be one player less depleted, and then you can make the trade later when Norris can play. So I don't I don't know what they're doing here, but they need to get this looked after ASAP. Shane Pinto at this point is um, urgently needed in Ottawa, so I'll be shocked if we get through the next uh, 24 hours before well 24 to 70 well I guess about under 48 hours before the rosters are due for opening night whether we don't get a Pinto signing or a trade or something because they, they have no choice. This has been dragging on for too long, and whether it be Matthew Joseph or a defenseman or whatever they're going to do, they have to make a move. So look for Ottawa to be likely active here in the next day or so. Another team, as I mentioned, Buffalo. Watch for uh, Uka Pekalukunen. Uh, I wonder, there's a lot of speculation that the Sabres might have to put a goalie on waivers. I don't think they will uh, because based on their salary cap situation, I think they can probably figure things out. You might see another player go. Buffalo's got a few things they're juggling here. You got three goalies between Levi, Lukanen, and Comrie. And then they, Zach Benson, the 23 first rounder, has been tearing it up. It looks like he's played his way onto the opening night roster. Um, they've been wanting to move Victor Olofsson and they haven't been able to. So something's got to give in Buffalo to it. So again, I think we're either going to see a goalie go on waivers, a goalie be traded, or you're going to see something else happen because they just, they can't carry all these guys. It's not really the greatest solution anyway. So, uh, be curious to see what they do, but Buffalo between the goalies, Olofsson, Seeing how Benson gets into the opening night lineup is going to be tricky to watch as well. I would be you know, curious to see what they do here over the next day or so. And there's been a crazy rumor I keep seeing popping up around Marc-Andre Fleury. And I don't get this, and I, I've dug into it. I can't really find a real great source or anything to me that makes great sense. But there's I keep seeing popping up that we're, we know Tampa obviously has Vasilevsky going on uh, LTIR for the first two to three months of the season. And there's this, I keep seeing articles popping up about Mark Andre Fleury being linked to Tampa. Now, Mark Andre Fleury is under contract in Minnesota. Minnesota has a good team. They're expected to be a playoff team. I'd say a lot of people are pegging Minnesota to probably be the third best team, at least on paper in the central division. So I think they have a real good shot making top three. And getting in the playoffs, so why why would they trade Flurry first? First of all, um, they're quite happy with Flurry and Gustafson as their tandem. Uh, secondly, 
uh, he does have trade protection, so he'd have to waive it and okay it. I know when he extended in Minnesota, there was a lot of talk that he may want to go back to Pittsburgh or do something else. And he even said, like, he's tired of moving around, tired of moving his family and his kids. Like, he decided that I just want to finish things out. I want to stay in Minnesota. So, do you think he's going to want to move again? I don't think so. I just, I don't understand. Now, I understand why. Tampa people might be looking around the league saying, okay, well, who could they move? Who could they trade for? And why his name might come up. Uh, after the way Gustafson played last year, I can see why some people might think the Minnesota might be open to move him. But there's a lot of other things that, to me, don't make sense. Because he'd have to agree to the deal. And it, just, and it would be complicated for them to do as well. I think the more likely scenario is Tampa's going to grab a goalie on waivers. Whether it be Chris Dreger that they can pick up as of tomorrow, or they wait to see... What Buffalo does, if they place a goalie on waivers, whether it be Comrie or UPL, or looking at Martin Jones in Toronto, is he going on waivers? Magnus Hellberg in Detroit, or not Detroit, sorry, Pittsburgh. Um, like, you know, there's a lot of other moves that I think are more likely to see, and I don't think Fleury's going anywhere. So if you see this rumor, I wouldn't put any stock into it. I just I see it keep popping up, so I thought I'd address it here just to give my thoughts on the situation. So otherwise, that's all for tonight. Let me know your thoughts on all of the news in the comments down below. We'll talk further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>